one, Melty Man two three four here, and welcome to another Forgotten Media Christmas special, where I can't make up my mind on how to make a consistent opening for these Christmas specials. <laughs> well, it's that time of year again to break out all those Christmas ornaments and decorations that are most likely based off of a famous popular franchise. <laughs> But if you're more into the traditional mood, then there's usually a holly or candles, or in this case, a nutcracker in its fairy tale story. Yep, this little guy was originally a sign of good luck in Germany and doing what it was designed for, but it seems to have lost its meaning these days, being treated as a simple Christmas decoration, as well as being known for the fairy tale story of a young girl who encounters this nutcracker doll, as well as the evil mouse king. Even if you haven't read the original story or seen the more famous ballet, there's a good chance that you've heard at least some of the music from said ballet. Now, when it comes to films based off of this story, it's very interesting. Out of all the film adaptations we've got, they usually prefer showing off their own idea of the Nutcracker. I haven't seen one that's at least more faithful to the original story rather than being loose adaptations. Even if the film is not faithful to the original story, it can still be entertaining if the film is good, or at least interesting. And for this one, we're going to be focusing on a Nutcracker adaptation that not many people bring up, and that is Nutcracker Fantasy. This stop-motion Japanese fantasy film was made by Sanrio and first released in Japan in 1979, and then later getting a US dub in the same year. It opens with the tale of the Ragman, a creepy man who lurks around the streets at night, searching for children who stay up too late and turns them into mice. For a film about a magical nutcracker and talking mice, it's weird seeing this segment that is more suitable for a Halloween or some other horror film. Man, now I'm just getting flashbacks to the magic Christmas tree all of a sudden. Oi! Well, after that segment, we cut to Clara in her room as she can't stop talking about meeting Fritz, who she hasn't seen in a long time. Now, Fritz is a character from the original story, but his relationship with Clara has varied from all the different adaptations. Most versions, they're just brother and sister, and other times they're just kids who know each other. And in this film, it's not quite clear on what their relationship is exactly, but I'm pretty sure they're just friends who know each other. Hopefully. After her constant daydreaming, her uncle Drosselmeyer, played by the late great Christopher Lee, pays a visit after fixing some clocks. He accidentally brings up a Nutcracker doll that he made, and Clara takes an instant liking to it, despite the fact that her uncle says that it's ugly. I've made, oh, I've made lots of dolls, so many of them. But people only want to buy beautiful dolls. What good is a doll with just a kind heart? Yep, that's what you would expect from a great actor like Lee. And then we have this scene. Tick tock tea. Tick tock tea. Tick tock. Tick-tock tea. Okay, Drosselmeyer's gone from being kind, friendly uncle to being that crazy uncle your family doesn't want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> After Clara falls asleep, she soon wakes up and notices a bunch of mice trying to drag the Nutcracker into a grandfather clock. She chases after them only to come face to face with an evil two-headed mouse queen. She manages to catch a glimpse of the Nutcracker coming to life and fighting off the mice before blacking out and waking up back in her bedroom. While asking herself if it was all a dream or not, she notices the Nutcracker is missing, and decides to go inside the grandfather clock as she notices her uncle walking down a tunnel. She chases after him, only to find herself in the Kingdom of Dolls, and meets the King, his Chamberlain, and his Captain of the Guards, Franz, who Clara seems to take an instant liking to, for some reason. The King tells her the tale of her daughter Mary, who just so happens to look like Clara, for some reason. A mouse queen, named Queen Morphea, attacked the kingdom, and the king sent his toy soldiers to battle, only to fail, probably because it wasn't a good idea to send out a bunch of wind-up toys to attack. After refusing to let his daughter marry the queen's son, Gar, she cursed her by making her a mutated mouse and trapping her in eternal sleep, unless he agrees to give her up. And it turns out Clara just so happens to show up on the day where the wise men from all over the world have come to try and help save the princess. And these wise men are, uh, yeah, mostly a bunch of racial stereotypes. Aside from that, they can't reach an agreement on how to save Princess Mary. The German guy thinks that his singing can wake her, the French guy thinks that science is the answer, and the British guy thinks that chopping her head off will fix the problem. While the king mourns his loss, Clara wanders around to find someone to help. She comes across a mysterious fortune teller who calls herself the Queen of Time. 
and tells her that the only way to save the princess is to defeat Queen Morphea by using the Pearl Sword of Light to destroy the Shell of Darkness. And with an answer like that, you think that this was something out of a Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> so after learning how to defeat her, the king sends his army to fight, which was the same army as before, and promises that Franz will marry the princess if he succeeds. Well, you think that with a kingdom of dolls would have more soldiers than just a bunch of wind-up toys. Well, anyway, a battle commences, and Franz just manages to destroy the shell and break the spell. But not everything ended well. As Queen Morphea Paris, she turned Franz into a nutcracker. And you think Princess Mary would be thankful and honor his sacrifice, right? Nope, she just snubs him off and walks away. Sheesh, ungrateful little bitch, ain't she? Man, that would have been a sour way to end the movie. But luckily, there's still some film left, as Clara starts her new journey to try and find a way to rescue Franz, all while Gar is after them for revenge. She eventually finds the Timekeeper, who tells her that the only way to save Franz is by a sacrifice from the power of love. While she tries to figure out what he means, she has some kind of dream of her and Franz having a fun time in a magical realm full of dancing food and a cameo of Hello Kitty. After waking up, she notices Gar is about to destroy Franz, and rushes in to take the blow, and then a bunch of weird stuff happens, and then she wakes up, again, what is this, Nutcracker reception? back in her bedroom. Everything is back to normal now, and Fritz shows up to see Clara, who also happens to look like Franz. Yeah, isn't she a little too young to be having some kind of romantic relationship with this tall, older man? Well, luckily the film ends before things get even more creepy. And that concludes Nutcracker Fantasy. It's definitely one of the more stranger adaptations, yet somehow it's very interesting at the same time. Well, for me anyway. For a film made in Japan, it's amazing how the animation and models are very reminiscent to those Rankin Bass films. It has some good acting, the style and characters are nice, but there are some questionable things about this film. Also, I feel like Clara's second quest to save Franz kind of felt a bit rushed. But other than that, I think this film's decent. I guess the best way to describe it is, Nutcracker meets Alice in Wonderland. In 2014, they released a remastered version of this film to coincide with Hello Kitty's 40th anniversary. This version features better image quality, a lot of the dancing scenes shortened or just cut from the film, and a few special effects and reshot scenes. The only downside is that the re-edits can be a bit sloppy, and for some reason it tends to recycle a lot of animation, most notably during the fight scenes. The original was fine with those previous scenes, so why bother recycling footage here? That's not improvement, that's just laziness. The film has been released on VHS, DVD, and surprisingly beta tape, but good luck in trying to find that version for a cheap price. The other versions can be a little tricky to find, and as far as I know, there's no Netflix or any other digital release either. Even so, I say this film's still worth checking out. And if that doesn't interest you, and there's also a 1973 Russian adaptation... That's right, I'm throwing in a bonus review here. This film was one of the earliest animated adaptations of the Nutcracker, and features a maid, I'm assuming it's Clara in this version, who befriends an enchanted Nutcracker doll who was cursed by an evil three-headed mouse queen after his father destroyed her. Her son, now king, leads his army to destroy the Nutcracker, and thus a battle ensues between mice and toys. Clara helps out in defeating the Mouse King, as well as breaking the spell on the Nutcracker, thus turning him into a prince, and turning Clara into a princess. They return to the prince's kingdom, and they dance together, while constantly transforming into flowers for some reason. And then the film just ends with these shots of Clara's clogs and the remains of the Nutcracker, which is kinda creepy. That's like the ending to a horror movie, where it's like, and then the two main characters die. The end. But joking aside, I enjoyed watching it after I came across this while working on Nutcracker Fantasy. The animation's well done, and despite no dialogue, it's simple to follow the story. It's roughly about 25 minutes long, so give it a watch if you have the time. I haven't found much info on where you can find this film on home media, but I'm sure you may be able to find it floating around the internet somewhere. Well, that wraps up this episode of Forgotten Media. So this is Melty Man 234 saying Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all that jazz. And here's hoping I'll be a little more active with this show next year, because I really don't want to rename this to the Forgotten Holiday Special Show. Hey.